What's up, all my Yorkshire Bulls, Joy Dan, Wookiees, it's Anna, also as a Star Wars girl. Welcome, welcome to my art channel. What's up, everyone? Been a minute. Been a minute now. Uh, I was kind of cleaning this up, and uh, I'm glad that I was able to start on time. So, uh, I haven't painted in a while. Apologies. Apologies to everyone. Uh, I got, uh, you know, a lot of stuff going on. Oh, jeez. It's playing on my phone. That's not smart. But uh, I got the urge to paint. I've had the urge, you know, the past few days. And I'm like, gosh, I, just, I need to paint. So I'm taking a break from freaking calendar separating and fulfillment and all of that. And uh, we're going to paint uh, this gentleman named Jeremy's eye. Now, he, uh, he's he got some intense lighting going on. No, this is not a, uh, to my knowledge, this is no famous YouTube Jeremy personality. This is just a gentleman named Jeremy. Very common name uh, in the United States of America. Right now, at least, I feel I feel like every guy is either named Jeremy or Ryan. Uh, like, those are the two names that I hear all the time. It's kind of like the, the new John, right? All right, let me set up my other phone. I'm going to mix some paint colors, but I got to get the, the time lapse all going. I hope everyone is uh, doing well. I know I've been kind of MIA. I've been so busy. I haven't had time to make videos or anything on my main channel. But uh, that will be remedied very, very soon. And uh, I will be back to making re regular daily content uh, before you guys know it. Oh, no. There you go. All right, time lapse is a going. <sighs> All right, let's look. This is uh, these are some dark colors. I'll show you guys. You guys want to see how dark this is? So it's a uh, some very dramatic lighting. So uh, probably gonna get to almost black here. Mm. I hope everyone is doing well. I don't even remember. When was the last time I streamed? What was going on back then? I don't even remember what was going on last time I streamed. It was ages ago, it feels like. What day is it even? I don't even know. Oh my goodness. And we have a pretty dark palette today. First time I've gotten like dramatic lighting to this extent, so this is going to be fun. I feel like I should make that more. Yeah. Lots of burnt umber today. Uh, I was, uh, I might just have this playing in the background. I was listening. My friend Drunk 3PO is doing an interview right now. And it's just mean that, okay, yeah, let's just combine these because it's a, I need more of this dark color. It's almost black. It's funny, you take a break from a oil painting for a little bit, and then you come back and it's like, ooh, that's a strong smell. I say oil painting is an acquired, uh, not an acquired taste, an acquired scent, I should say. This is going to be fun. If you guys haven't already, please smash the like button, please, and thank you. Help out the channel and the algorithms. The algorithms, which are always fun. Tone that down a little too much. Let's get some more burnt umber in there. I'm going to need a lot of that for this one. That's what she said. 100% what she said. 
So I was approved for membership on this channel, so I added it. I wasn't sure if I was going to or not, but one of the things that Drunk 3 bo does, uh, which I think is a good idea, he does like, after he does a live stream, like he has a weekly live stream on Saturdays, and after his live stream, he'll do like a members uh, voice chat, or like he'll do a voice chat with his members on Discord. And I was like, oh, I could do that and, like, answer questions about a uh, painting. So uh, I added that. There's also, I, th I don't know if I was able to add emojis or not. I don't think I did. On my other channel, I added emojis. They're funny. I really hope this turns out good because this is a great photo reference. Oh, I'm thirsty. I didn't have anything to drink. I've been winging myself off of caffeine. Alright. I think I'm going to play this. Uh, I'll put the link to this interview I'm listening to in the chat if you guys want to listen to it as well. It's a, uh, whatchamacallit, Drunk 3PO is doing an interview. No, no, no. But yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, but it was, uh, it was really, all right, so I'll say this. It was really weird. After that day, um, we really changed our attitude towards, you know, all this stuff. And it was, uh, it was, it was great. Our channel just, it's not letting me become a member. Hard. What? It's like, you know, it's, it's moving what I do? Make some amazing friends. Thank you for the super chat. Let me see. That work at Disney and Universal and all those places, they appreciate that we're not bought and paid for by Disney. They're always throwing me stuff. They're always <laughs> here, like do this, here, do that, like and and it's so uh, they're like, we can't stand those guys. Like they they know all about it and um hmm. it was pretty awesome. But I almost I almost quit it because uh, and I'll end on, uh, you that, should I'll be able to join. This, but there was a time. Uh. So, like, the pandemic was happening. I live in Florida. Florida opened up. Christopher Prophet, they was about what are the tears? Uh, you can read I them. I, went to all the parts. I don't remember what I put. Every time I went live, there were people in the live chat. That were like, I hope you die from the coup. I hope you die. You shouldn't be outside of your home. You shouldn't be this. You shouldn't be that. Like they were so mad because Florida was open before a lot of the rest of America. Right. And they're like, What are you doing at a theme park? We're in a pandemic. Blah blah blah. Like, and every time I was going, I was like, Dang. Like, and it was vicious. So I was like, I was like, Oh, right, Jerry, man. I don't know, man. This is rough. He's like, Are you good? Are you gonna say I'm good? And that went on to, especially, it was heavy in January and February. I don't know why. Then Gina Carano got fired, right? Yeah. By Disney. And I'm thinking, good God, man, if I go to Disney Park now, while uh, everyone is in a frenzy, it, it's going to be, and especially me, because, you know, I'm friends with her, like, it's like, it's going to be awful. So I waited, I remember. I called, and I was like, I can't. Went to Universal like for a week. I went to Legoland. I went to all these places, and I was like, I "Gotta go!" Like it's part of the job, you know. It's like part of the job. I gotta go. And I remember telling the you know, park hopping people, I was like, um, "I'm gonna go to the Magic Kingdom. I'm gonna get it out of the way. <laughs> like I'm just gonna go." I was like, "Let people vent. Let them get angry. Let them say what they want to say. As long as they don't dox me or anything, just let it go. Just let it go. I'll be okay. I'm ready." I'll be okay. Get to the Magic Kingdom, turn on the live stream. It was brutal. Mm -hmm. I mean, people were like, I hope you die. I hope you die. I, I wish nothing but death on you. Oh, I poor drunk. I hope Gina never speaks to you. I mean, it was like, boom, boom, boom. Who takes boom, the time boom, to do that? Like, I to mean, just watch people on So I, I just went through this pandemic crowd, 
Yeah, at least I caught the coop and die. Now I'm going through the Gina stuff, and I'm like, I remember Jeremy was in the live. He was texting me on my other phone. We have a work phone. And he's like, you okay? You okay? I'm like, I'm all right. I'm all right. I'm all right. And it's just like, it just was non, it just did not stop. And I'm trying to be off. And over here, we got, you know, the country bears Jeffrey. And over here, we got this. And I'm like trying to ignore it. <laughs> I'm trying to ignore it. And then Aww, I'm poor drunk 3PO. Like, Dude, you good, man? Maybe you should turn it off. I'm like, no, nah, I'm going to do an hour. It's part of the job. It's a job. I know what we're trying to do. This that we, we we work with Bloomberg as well, our common does to get articles and stuff out. And I'm like, we're gonna make it work. So we walk through, walk through, walk through. The hour was up, I turned I turned it off. Uh, I think we privated that live stream because it was so bad. Because the comments afterwards were like, death, die, death, die. Um and I was like, you know, Jeremy, I might not be the right guy. <laughs> That's what you want on a loving channel. I was like, this is, this is rough, man. Like, this is like, every time I go to a theme park to ride some rides, people want me to die. Like, what is that? So we push through, and we're at a really, every now and then we get a couple comments. I hate Disney. I was like, yeah, I hate, I hate what they did, too. Um, you know, and so it was like, um, but we pushed through and like here we are. So what a stronger man like, for it. Not one person came to, to kill me, so this is true. We're grateful for that. Oh what oh exactly my. what exactly does the job entail? Like I, I've seen some of your, your um, videos, but as an overall, I mean is it just to give people the experience of the theme different theme cards or, or is it just kind of like if you will undercover work to um, a mixture of, it's a mixture of a lot of things. The theme, the, the crazy thing is the theme park community, and that's what they call it, is bigger. It's one of the biggest communities I've ever seen. Like people are obsessed with theme park, theme park stuff. Uh, just two days ago, Disney released the most god awful looking popcorn buckets, and people waited five to six hours to get one. Like that's how. That's how these people are. And hey, man, that's what they love, good for them. Um, and so we report on stuff like that. And so it, it's, you know, and I, I like going to theme parks. I've, I've always gone, you know, it's just, I enjoy it. But it, it uh, and so it's just reporting what's going on. And they, they change things up like every week. There's always something new. There's always something closing. There's always some crazy thing that happens. You know, there was a fight at Disney the other week. There, they're selling popcorn buckets, and so people are buying these uh, popcorn buckets and reselling them for a thousand dollars on eBay. So I'm going tomorrow to see if I get two to sell for a thousand dollars on eBay. Um, yeah, so it's like it's 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 an interesting, you know, people have made theme parks their profession because of the obsession it is for for so many um, for so many people that. That live there, you know, or go there, that, that travel, that ride roller coasters. So that's just what we, we just kind of tapped into that market, you know, for what it's worth. And, and like, I'm a little different than a lot of theme park people are like, everything is so awesome here. I love it. Nothing's ever bad here. And I'm, and I'm there. And I'm like, man, this place sucks. Like, this is terrible. You know, like, what's going on over there? And he wonders why he doesn't get free stuff. <laughs> Trolls. Look at that. Archie, get on it. <laughs> Here comes the troll. I knew they were going to come. I knew they were going to come. I knew they were going to come. And so it was like, um, it, it's like we go live and like I look at people and see what they're wearing. I'm like, don't ever, I'm like, don't ever wear this to the theme park, please. So, but the things that I love, you know, like you say, we're very honest. We just like, we love this, we hate this. And people don't give you grief for carrying a camera around. I guess it's so common. Oh, people man. Care. Uh, uh, you do it with your phone or do you do it with your phone? Uh, I do it with an iPhone 13. Yeah, a gimbal. So it's not that. It's not, it's not too big. It gets the job done. So. 
It's fine. I love it. You know, like I said, I'll be there tomorrow. So I, I go there with Rogue Disney sometimes, and that's. Yeah. <laughs> uh, he has a little has a little rat on his shoulder. He has a little rat. <laughs> I think a lot of people have this thing. Uh, I, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I refuse to call it a snake. It's, it's just a rat. Salacious crumb. I just, tell, I just tell them, like, don't get too much out on me because I might just think it's something real crawling up your shoulder and just punch it right off. You know? <laughs> Jerry, rats on your shoulder, man! Like, whoosh. Um, drunk make a baby with Gina and call it wow. Look at these trolls, man. Are you guys trolling drunk through beer right now? Poor drunk. It must be so hard being that handsome that you always have trolls. Good for my palette. I might take this. This was trying to like make it a little bit bluer. Just stuff where I was traveling. I, I wasn't really focused on what the content was per se, and it was just like uh, so. I like when I, I spent a lot of years in Haiti, so it was like um, I got to go to a, a, play, a community or something and just record something. And it on YouTube so like people that were trying to give money could see it uh, firsthand like that that's the only reason why that channel was there so I didn't really turn it into something that people would really want to watch till later on and, uh, okay I think my palette's done I like, now that I understand you too, that, like how it works it's like it's just something that you're just trying to put it together it, that, that channel's really hard because it's like you have to travel to make that thing work. Okay. <laughs> you know? Well, yeah, Jay the Yeah, they have to travel, and that, and that costs money. And of course, we're in the middle of lockdowns at times, and passports, yeah. special passports, and all that stuff. So yeah. it makes it difficult. Yeah. It makes it difficult, but I've um, been working around it, and at least trying to do at least a trip every month. A trip every month and crazy. Sam says, when did you first go to Sri Lanka? Yeah, how long ago? Five years ago? Five years ago, I think. Sri Lanka was an interesting place because we were at this hotel and the people came by the hotel. <laughs> One morning and, and put a 
I've noticed on all our more things. You can't leave the room there's a uh, cobra warning. And I was like, <laughs> Oh my gosh. Cobra warning? What does that mean? And I was like, Stupid me. We went off my door and go, right? Mark goes marching down, you know, to the manager. I was like, What is this? We gotta go somewhere. And they're like, Sir, go back to your room. Like, there's been two cobra sightings. We don't want you to get bit. And I'm like, are you, are you serious? Oh, my God. A cobra? Like, He's like, we'll let you know. So then I, like, then, like, when I realized it was real, like, getting back to my room was, you know, you, you're like a ninja. It's like. Yeah. I hear wrestling. Yeah, I, I, I have to get back to the room. It's like, call the room. Don't leave your room. It's real. Don't leave your room. Don't leave your room. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Mm-hmm. I'm saying I would be hiding on top of the nightstand. I wouldn't go near bed. I wouldn't go near any openings. <laughs> and cobras are my least favorite thing. Oh my goodness. They're huge. They're, just, like, they're mm-hmm. huge though. They wouldn't get in the room. They're just freaking huge. Mm-hmm. But you like look lift up the toilet seat, like Yeah. Yeah. That's that was that was that was interesting. It's a problem that you never think you would have in a hotel, right? <laughs> anywhere. 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 <laughs> it's kind of like a cobra problem. <laughs> oh my well, eventually they caught them, I guess, and then they came around and were like, it's free, safe, come out now, we got them. Right, it's just like, another day in Tulane. It doesn't longer. matter. Like, if your mind is like, okay, right. are you sure you got them all? Right. I'm like, yeah, I'm pretty sure. Be all right. Like, well, an hour ago, he thought I was gonna die. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I hate them all, but something about. <laughs> I mean, if, if I had my wish, the uh, Jaywalking the Planet channel would be like my main, like, would be pumping enough, you know. So and that's just what I would do. Like, so you want to do more of that? Oh of man, I, I just want to get like a brand new truck and just like drive all fifty states. You know, I would love yeah. to do that. I would love that. I would love that more than anything. Like, it was my dream. That's not awesome. And just oh really? And just uh, you know, just. And just stop when you want. Be like, oh, that looks cool. Let's stop over there. Oh, that looks cool. Let's go over there. Right. So, just absolute freedom to do what you want to do and see what you want to see. And just, just go. That's why I enjoy watching your Jay Walk the Planet and other traveling videos. Like, I want to do that. Oh, Patrick T., thank you for becoming a member. Yeah, I, I love your videos. Was it the, the burn the ships, burn the boats? Burn the boats. Very inspiring. Very wonderful. Like, said, there is no perfect time to travel or anything like that. You just gotta like, obviously plan a little bit, but can't wait for the perfect day. Well, perfect amount that's of money. the thing. It was like the lockdowns really opened my eyes where my you know before so i've been around the world twice um the only place i've never really been were like if it's cold like russia <laughs> any place up there but like mostly all of asia africa um a lot of time in the caribbean peru and south america stuff like that i mean i haven't been everywhere but um you know six tours in china and all that stuff over over my lifetime and I really wanted to, where I felt like my life was getting back in order um, with everything. And I was like, you know, I want to see America, you know, like I want to like see, you know, Mount Mount Rushmore. I want to go to Yellowstone. I want to see the giant redwoods. I want to, I really wanted to do I've done like almost all of those things. I want, you know, all that stuff. Go see the so whales in Hawaii. Like, all right, let's go. Like I'm in Florida, I can beeline it all the way up to New York, and then come back down. Go see Niagara Falls. I had it all like ready to go, and it's like the job. I, I, I quit my teaching job to take an online teaching job so I could do that. 
Like that was like what I would do. So I could work as long as I had the internet in the morning and then I could go and do whatever I wanted to do. So that was my plan. And then when the lock when we were locked in our home, it just every day I was like, man, they could this could be taken away from me at like an instant. And it, and I don't want to be that guy that goes, man, I, I wish I should have, I, you know, I, I don't want to live in the excuse and just be like, man, why did I wait so long? Why did I wait for the perfect moment? Why did I, why did I wait? You know, like what, what was my excuse for not just going? And I mean, I get it. You need, you gotta have money. You gotta have, you know, you just, you shouldn't go in. I don't think you should go into debt for something like that, but I had to, my life was kind of set up, ready to go. I could work and just drive and do this whole thing. And uh, when they took that away, it, it was like, wow. And then the, the, the biggest shocker to me was my grandma passed away earlier this year. And wow. I couldn't go to the funeral. Or earlier last year, excuse me. And I, I couldn't. She's 96. And I couldn't go to the funeral. I couldn't visit her for Christmas because of you know, the world and like what was going on. I thought it was terrible. And when we got to the funeral part, my brother lives in Florida too. They were like, well, at the time, the the, the law was only six people or something like that could go. And they're like, yeah, you guys can't go. And it just opened my mind to to like, life is so freaking precious and short. And what are we doing? Why are we not taking a chance? Why are we not stepping out of the boat? Why are we scared? Like, why are we, or at least for me, it's like, I wanted to go to New York. I wanted to go to Times Square and stay in Times Square and, you know, walk in Times Square. And it, and, and I was, I did that, you know, I did a whole East Coast thing. I went to Vegas a few times already. I did all that stuff. Um, I wanted to do that, so I prepared, you know, I cut a lot of stuff out of my life that was costing money. I saved, I worked harder, I, you know, I stayed up and put in extra hours in and different things to, to have money so I can do that because... Can you guys hear this okay? Where it's like, you can't do that anymore, you know, whether you, you could you know, get too old or who knows what could happen, you know, and I don't want to live like that because... I, and too many people I've seen just fall victim to the excuse. And it's like, this is an excuse, that is an excuse, this is an excuse, and they wait. And the next year comes, it's the same excuse, the next year comes, the same excuse, the next year. And pr- before you know it, it's like, well, you know, there's 10 years down the road. What was I doing in those 10 years that I couldn't do one of the things I wanted to do? You know what I mean? And, it, and it's... It's, uh, I, I just don't want to live like that anymore because I don't, I don't want to live like that knowing I missed out on something that I really wanted to do. So that, that's just me. I mean, listen, everybody has their own story and their own challenge in life that they deal with. And, you know, but, uh, it, it's, it's, uh, life is so precious and it's so beautiful. If you watch Twitter and the news and everything, they'll convince you that life is ugly and that people are ugly and that this world is ugly and that all people do is fight and point fingers. I mean, that's all they do. And it's not. It's beautiful. And I've been around the world, like I said, twice. And I'm, you know, people would always warn me, you better not go to China to hate Americans, or you better not go to the Middle East to hate Man, it's the furthest from this truth. When I was in the Middle East, it was like they were waving the American flags when I got the plane. See, they don't tell you like, stuff like that, yeah. No, I don't. You know, they, they saw this fear, and it's like, you know, and I, I got to, I had the privilege of celebrating Christmases in other countries. And it, it's beautiful. It, it's such a, it's very different. You know, it's very different. And I've celebrated with people in Africa that had nothing. But to see, like, this community is celebrated in Haiti, um, 
for people who are eating a meal a day in the sea. It, it, I don't know. It just it really changes your perspective on the world than what we see on social media and the media and all that stuff. Because the world is beautiful. There, the people are beautiful. There's amazing people doing amazing things that we just don't know about, but they're there if you open your eyes and see. <sighs> and you gotta get out and see it. You gotta get out and see it. Like that's just how it is. You gotta get out and meet the right people to see. It. I'm sorry, I rambled off for a bit, but well, in the words of Hannah Montana, life is what you make it. <laughs> Very true. Hannah Montana said that, huh? Well, you know the people that wrote her song, but she sang it. So. <laughs> she did. I mean, the premise is still the same. I agree. I'm, I'm saying life is like, day. Like, what is you know, sitting around waiting, and what am I waiting for? So that's what I did last year and the year before. It's like time to. I didn't go to great destinations, but I basically got out of my comfort zone and said, I'm going to visit with my family more. I'm going to visit with my friends mm-hmm. more. I was blessed that my family, my different family members, because of the pandemic, they didn't shun me or not not intentionally shun me, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Put up those precautions that kept us at distance. In fact, they were very welcoming and wanted to see me. And I, I didn't want to take that for granted. Yeah. So I was like, I'm going to take this opportunity. Oh, no. People are going to be sick and I'm going to die because maybe it's going to be without It was really sad. It was really sad. Really but I think when people see, I don't know, I, I hope for whatever it's worth to inspire others to take a step and live their dream. And, you know, sometimes even if it's family, you got to just, I respect your decision, so I'm going to go to Vegas. <laughs> I respect your decision, but I'm going to go, you know, wherever, and I'm going to take a chance. I'm going to take a chance on this person. I'm going to take a chance on this. And you know what? Sometimes things don't work out. Sometimes you get rejected. Sometimes you just can't go, but it's like, hmm. you just got to step out of the boat, man. Like, you don't understand what living is unless you step out of the boat and take a few steps. You know, you might start to drown yeah, here. Somebody will pull you out. That's all I'm saying. Like, it, there's well, no greater feeling. Um, like you just called Peter out of the belt. Hey, come to me. Well, that's such an interesting story because they thought it was a ghost. They're like, yeah, there's a ghost exactly. out there. <laughs> <laughs> and he wants me to walk on the water? Are you insane? Yeah. You know, and Peter's like, dumb. Peter's like, you know, most of us, dumb. And, like, and that's the beautiful thing about having that dumb faith. It's okay. like, Peter wasn't the brightest, but he was like, well, all right, why not? If you look at all these people, you know, that are scared to take, who, who else did it? Nobody did. Peter did, but there was other people in the boat. Could you imagine what they were doing? Like, there's dumb old Peter again. Yeah. Gonna, gonna drown, who's walking for a ghost, you know, and he did it, you know? And, and like, and just like all of us, the waves, get, the storms of life hit, and you get scared, and he started to sink, but... He didn't die, man. He lived through it. And you and that What are they talking about? about it. You know? You never heard Peter like go around the like in the Bible. He might have, but it wasn't. Oh, it was a biblical story. Like, uh, excuse me, Paul. I'm the one that walked on water, buddy. Not you. You know, it's like it never and I, let me tell you something. If I walked on water in front of 20 people, everybody would hear that story every 10 minutes. So that's all I'm saying. <laughs> Which is why YouTube wasn't invented back then. <laughs> exactly. But it's, it's just like, uh, like, but he did, you know? Even if it was two steps, he took the steps while the other ones were afraid. And for whatever reason, I think things happen in the universe and in life to challenge us to take these steps. And, um, I'm like a drunk getting all sentimental. You know, it's like a dumb, it's a dumb leap of faith, man. It's just, mm-hmm. it's, it, it is what it is. You're gonna get wet. You gotta take a step. Ooh, that's what she take said. Chance. Listen, one thing in life is certain: you will experience rejection. This is how it is. You're gonna experience painful heartache. Like it's yeah. just that's life. You're going to experience those things. You're going to experience depression. You're going to experience low, low, low places that no one 
will understand what you're dealing with. No one. And you're also going to go through life and try to fill, fill emptiness that you have with so many things. Well, maybe this will make me happy. And you see people get addicted to food, to drugs, to alcohol, because they like they can keep consuming something that they think is helping them. Right. Um, yeah. And it's just, it, we, but we all deal with that kind of stuff, you know. And it's those that are like, no, 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 this ain't it. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep trying to walk forward. You know, the road is pretty narrow, but I'm gonna keep. I gotta keep focused. And you see the incredible things that they do because I truly believe within my heart that walking in a passion that you have is one of the greatest fulfillments because it's a gift. It's a gift from God that is given to us um, to express out to the world. And you don't have to be famous. You ain't got to be a millionaire. You ain't got to be all this stuff. You just have to do what you're supposed to be doing. And I think you'll know. Like, I think you'll know what you're supposed to be doing. Whether it's coloring pictures with crayons, or sitting with kids, or teaching a class, or listening, or taking care of old people, or teaching piano, or whatever it is, it, it's it's there's a list. Of, it's, it's not five things. It's a million things on the board. Yeah. And you walk in it, you will feel so fulfilled and so full of joy, and so that you'll want to keep doing it. But the problem is, so sappy. Getting there. <laughs> yes. Amen. <laughs> that's, the, that's the issue that we all face. But I think that's part of the journey, though. That's part of the you wouldn't journey. appreciate it as much if you didn't go through the hardships. Yeah. That was a lot to throw out there. Sorry. Was it was beautiful. Man, I could listen to it all day. I need mean, that. Uh, <laughs> I got to keep streaming. I'll be right back. Oh, okay. Yeah. No, no streaming children allowed there, man. Well, now that it's just Jay and I, I need to do it. <laughs> Where are we going first? Where's the one place you want to visit first? Not with me. I, I just, I'm just saying with you. Sure, let's go. You want to visit the United States? Let's go. I. Where, do you, where, where would you want to go first? I've always wanted to see the Red Lakes in California. Oh my God, I go there all the time. Yeah, the big trees you can drive a car through. Right? No, that tree fell over. You can't drive through that tree anymore. It fell over. Um, what was it? Probably Jacob. I want to comment. I would love to go back to the Zion National Park in Utah. I was there when I was very small, but I remember being there the most beautiful And because I was so young at the time, I would love to go back and just see if it's everything I remember it being. Plus, You're like an Ewok or a Wookiee. <laughs> what? What'd you say? Like an I Ewok like or a Wookiee? You like the forest, so you either like. It's so funny. I love the forest. I love grass, but I do love the desert. I love the trees, the sand, rocks. Anna said that tree fell over. You mean the tree that the car goes through? It fell over. Or the famous one? Well, that sucks. I'm not going now. <laughs> I could find a new one. There's just so many beautiful places, like I said, you know, Alaska. I'm planning, planning to go to. Camp I've been in that tree. Look, let's do this. We don't get to see each other that often. Life is too short, and we have planned to go in 2020, but of course the world shut down. So we're planning for next year, and it's like it's gonna ha- make it happen. We get in her face, we can make it happen. You know what? It's here. We don't know what the world's gonna, what the future's gonna hold, and might as well make the best of it while we can. You know, and I'm just too drive up. I drive up so that way uh, she and I can have a lot of more quality time getting to know one another. So we don't get to see each other that often. So the more time together, the better. I think road trips are awesome. I think they're one of the best ways to travel because you really get to know people uh, on a road trip. She come, well. down to, she come down to St. Augustine. Why? What's in St. Augustine? The fountain of you is it? Ponce de Leon is the oldest city in America. I know it is. <laughs> I do. Uh, you were just like, no, I. In college, it's like I took uh, I took McKenna there for the first time, uh, not not too long ago. She loved it. She's like, I want to go back. I want to go back. I want to go back. I, was like, I do plan to go to Florida one day again. I haven't been to Florida since I was five years old, so I'd like to like, what? visit. I... You have a car? 
Oh, he's back. Uh, all right. So anyway, date going on, man. Like, no, man. You messed up our date. You're like very oh, weird. Okay. Internet <laughs> Everyone's saying you're taking a dump in the chat. I don't know if that's true. Or not. Just wanted to throw uh, it, 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 it would have been probably 10 more minutes. <laughs> that's the information we were looking for. That's right. Uh, my, my wife would tell you that. I'm just too long with the dog. Make sure to ask her back next time. Well, don't forget that R2 said, uh, what was that? I think that's my partner's thing over there. Oh, yeah, I wrote a My speech was that moving, Dan had to use the bathroom. <laughs> Tabitha's laughing so much, she's snorting and coughing. <laughs> Oh my gosh. See, you see, fellas, that's the kind of effect I have on women. They snort and cough. So don't think it's all sunshine and rainbows on my end. And yawn. Imagine if she had water in her mouth and I was sitting across from her. It's all over this. That's all I'm saying. I have spat out water in a live stream before. I can't remember what was going on. I took a step in R2 and Dax said something in the chat. I don't remember what it was. I mean, everywhere. I'm so glad I didn't get it on my computer. <laughs> it was like a mountain. <laughs> R2 says Jay brings out the best in us and the poop out of us. Uh, maybe for some of you, I cannot testify to that. <laughs> wow. So, do you have big plans for Jay walking the planet Drunk 3PO? Um, Drunk 3PO is kind of transitioning to uh more of the podcast that i really love doing that you were on for a lot of the episodes i really love really love doing the podcast the welcome to rebellion podcast on that channel now what can i say to do in the podcast i wanted to do more of that style i've interviewed people on that channel before and you know i've had had everybody on one-on-one conversations before and it was John Bartolo was like it was just you need to you need to put that into a podcast form and um Moss will do it to try to make money off of it since you, you do such a good job with it I didn't think like I didn't think it it's funny when someone like John Bartolo has like one of the highest rated podcasts in America to say that to you and you're just kind of like that's high praise and he walked me through the whole process he had his people talk to my people and put all that stuff together and <clears throat> he was just like you're good at this like you, you can do this for a living so the only way you're going to know is if you get started it's like it isn't anything you haven't done already you just got to think of a name. So he, him and Ryan, Ryan Kennel got me mixed up with nine line apparel they called and the shirt that Tabitha is wearing now, which is on sale, by the way, for about six more days at nine line apparel. Yeah, thank you. I've used her photo many times for promotional purposes. But they, they love the Welcome to Rebellion movement i talked to gina of course because she's the one who said it and kind of sparked the whole thing when gina first said welcome to the rebellion i called, i texted her and i said hey would you mind if i make a shirt that said that and i won't keep it in the money we'll give it away but i think people really want that shirt and she was like jay keep the money go for it run with it man do it do it do it but just i was like i, I don't want to profit off you being fired you know what i mean like yeah. Because I know the haters were going to come and go. They're going to come and go, oh, look at him. You think he's Gina's friend? He's profiting off of Gina being fired. So my YouTube members, many of them are here. They know. Um, they know. We started selling those shirts, and we gave $1,000 a month away. Between that and my Patreon, two different charities that they picked. Um, 
inside America, outside America, feeding America, women who lost parent, who lost children at a young age, all this stuff. And we just gave the money away, but then the nine line picked it up. And the only reason I agree with them, they were like, well, we use a lot of the money to help veterans uh, in transition homes. So I'm like, and then this welcome to rebellion thing, it, like I, when they started selling those shirts, listen, my channel's 50,000 subscribers. In the grand scheme of things, it's, it's I'm nothing but a little drop in the pond. So I'm thinking I'd sell maybe a hundred, right? <laughs> I didn't know we were set. And this was out, this was without Gina Crom promoting it. I didn't know we would set record after record after record after record, um, building hundreds of transitional homes with the money. And I just didn't think that was going to happen, you know, and it was really shocking on that. They kept calling saying, we got to release it again because we got 400 emails and people want the shirt because they only run things for like two weeks because they don't, the way they do it is so perfect. They take the orders for two weeks and then they print out the, the number that ordered it, send it out. So they don't have boxes of it laying around. Okay. So like it's on its fourth run now because it's, it's a shot of it. So John was like, just call it Welcome to Rebellion Podcast. Then everybody who has a shirt, it'll all right. it'll work. Right. So that's how that became. And it, it just started. And we're averaging about, let's see, we're doing well. Almost uh, 3,000 downloads per episode, which John said is an amazing person. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, it's like, now, because what you normally use? when you start, it's about 10. Yeah, so. What do you use for the audio? I record it live on YouTube like this, and then I have a program that just rips the MP3 out. Then I run it through a, an editor to make sure it's kind of clean, and that the bookends are right, perfectly clean. And then I set it to pod theme. They take it from there, and they they, mm -hmm. they shoot it out. One of my best friends is in the chat what's up mark with the c so uh awesome. you guys need to have him on the show the guy's a hundred times better at me with this conversation the dude is one of the greatest uh motivational good guys i have ever been around the guy is he's like i i love this dude man like he could call me for anything um he, i just i just love that guy. he just has that look of wisdom Right. You just look so at him nice, he knows yeah. things. I need to know what he knows. <laughs> uh, Mods, instead of plugging my channel, can you put Mark with the C's channel in the chat? That would be great. Mm -hmm. I appreciate yeah, the yeah. love, but if you could put Mark with the C, if that's okay with you. Yeah. No, yeah, that's fine. Okay, uh, that would be awesome mm -hmm. if you could do that. Like, he, uh, yeah, so, he deserves uh, a lot more love than I do, trust out. me. So, he's like, oh, stop. You know, I'm not going to stop. Mark, so Mark, this is funny. Mark, I met him for the first time in Times Square, New York. I'm 6'4". Oh, nice. I'm a big dude. Mark with a C is a bigger, he's a big black man, all right? Okay. Bigger than me. I wanted to treat him for breakfast, right? So we're in New York. He shows up. I give him a big hug. He's like, hey, Mark, you're so big, right? We go to the Dunkin' Donuts. That's in Times Square and like I'm used I'm not used to Times Square. So it's like it's very small. You walk in, you order and you go outside. There was all these college kids in there, like just crowding it inside, right? They're just crowding it. And we're outside, me and Marcus and I was like, what the heck is going on? All these people in here, like all these kids. You know, like all these little college kids. Let me turn down the brightness for you guys. Recorded, being cool and all this stuff wearing their tight pants. So I open the door and me and Mark walk in and I just go, are all you people in line? Like really loud. <laughs> and I'm like, they all turn around and they see big me, but they see big Mark like next to me. And they all go, no, sir. And they all look they all <laughs> oh, <my> out. <laughs> and I looked up at Mark and we started laughing. This stuff is so funny. Also, I see Miss Martin Muse in the chat. She has an article that she wrote for the Jaywalk in the Planet website that's going to be out in about a week. Um, oh, our editor people are putting it together. Yeah, she's also a traveler. Awesome, awesome person and supporter. 
uh, she's gonna have like she asked she can write some stuff about travel and a little bit of person. So glad just you hear Miss Martin news. It should be out in a week. I'll let you know on Twitter when it's out. I love how you have people. You're like I'm I'm nobody, but you've got people. <laughs> They're amazing people. Amazing people. But jaywalking the planet, I plan on going to Alaska, Montana, uh, Tennessee, and a lot of stuff locally here in Florida. And we're gonna do some product reviews. People are like, what kind of bag you wear and like things like that. Um, Anywhere else, to, if, if money starts kicking in with that channel a little bit, I'll, I'll be driving more. I really just, my dream, man, like I said, it's, sad, it's a simple dream. I just want a nice four door truck that I can just load up winter and summer clothes and maybe a tent or two and just, and just go for like four months. Yeah, just go. I'll pay my rent in advance where I'm living. Just tell my landlord just you know, turn all the power off. I can be here, or maybe I'll have somebody hang out. Just go. Yeah, I'd love to go to look. Texas, go to I would. I want to go to Texas. Visit all the Buckies. Uh, go through the Carolinas, all that stuff. Just go. And just stop whenever you know. There's a freedom to it. I just want to like, I just want to meet, like, meeting Mark and people from the Dark Council. And we did a, uh, we did a, uh, a Times Square meetup. Now at the time, New York was under heavy restrictions, max passports, and all that stuff. And I threw it out there, um, you know, it's just me on Twitter. Hey, we're going to be, we're going to be at the Krispy Kreme in Times Square. If anybody comes out, um, I'll buy you all donuts and dinner. And they almost come out and say, hey, that's it. It's like a ton of people showed up, more than I expected. Some traveled two hours just to hang out oh, wow. in the middle of Times Square. And it was one of the greatest, as bad as New York has become, it was one of the greatest joys to meet people. Thank you uh, for the super and, chat just be around people and hear their stories and buy them donuts and I, it just was beautiful we spent all the day i we walked a couple blocks and got new york pizza with them mm -hmm. it was amazing uh, wasn't there was a certain amazing. woman in the background with the guitar not very much if i remember correctly yeah it was a couple of movies <laughs> showed some movies oh, but that's Times square Right. <laughs> just never know yeah. what you're going to say. Know, oh, man, like, I was live, and I'm, like, uh, I'm, like, walking into, like, uh, protests, and I'm, like, hey, they just started protesting, and the people from New York was, like, do you want to go over there? Yeah, you're going to get hurt. I was, like, I, I, I don't know a little better, but we just did. It was it was awesome. Don, Don is in the chat. Don, who uh, doesn't walk the greatest walked with us the whole time to get pizza because she wanted to hang with us and that meant the world not only to me but to mark who's in the chat and to so many others uh she really is a shining star in our community or fellowship whatever they want to call it so um just just some amazing people doxy dr rachel i met her in boston awesome awesome supporter you know, just I just see everyone, A2, JT, TD, all you guys, just like just such good people. You know, um, mm -hmm. just make it all like make it all worthwhile. So. What do you think your secret tools? Don't be all um, humble and be like I'm nothing special. I know you say that all the time, but there's something about you. What do you think? Just point I think I'm life. successful because. Uh, just living out everything that I wanted to do, and um, I know what this <sighs> so I mean, listen, I, I go to theme parks for a living. <laughs> I mean, it's like 
it, it, I'm living a dream right now, and I looked, I looked back just five, maybe five and a half years ago, and my life was such a mess, a terrible breakup. You know, I was drowning in debt. I was overweight. I didn't know. You know, I was like I'm too old, and like no one will ever love me, and like that whole what was me. My job sucked. You know, I, I was a teacher, but the teachers they don't get paid a lot. It was like it was just like life was just not good. And to crawl yourself out of that, to look back at it, and still know I got ways to go. There was a moment when I was in California. I, I don't. I only shared this. I only shared it a few times. There was a moment in California where. I was with McKenna. We were climbing Mount Whitney, but we went to this one place, and um, it was like a waterfall. Uh, there was no phone service; it didn't work. It was a waterfall, and we had climbed up pretty high. And I remember just sitting there, and I just got so emotional. Like that—that's not really get me emotional. I got so emotional. It was—it it, not that I was like sobbing. It was just more like. It was like, look where you are. Like, look, it just everything from this is where you were to look where you are and get ready because this is where I'm going to take you. It's like I heard the wind blow and I heard this echo of like, I'm not done with you yet. That's all I kept hearing. And it just overwhelmed me emotionally. And I sat there and I remember the kid was like, you good? I'm like, I just need to sit here. And she goes, sit, sit there as long as you want. And I sat there. It was like two or three hours. The sun was going down. And I just didn't, you know, you ever have those moments, whether for some people might say it's like a moment with God or a moment in nature or a moment with whatever. Where it was like, I don't want to leave this place. <laughs> like, this is a good place. I don't want to leave this spot. I don't want this feeling that I have to, to end. I don't, this is where I want to be. Like, this is a moment for me that I haven't had in years, in years. And, you know, it, and it just, that's why I'm successful, because that, that's what I think. It's not about the money. It's not about, it, it, it's just, just happy with life right now. So and it's just getting better. It's just going to get better. So it has to, right? I mean, I guess it could get worse, but. Well, since you made it past all the uh, heat park meter, I hope so. That's pretty awesome. It's awesome. Yeah. It's awesome. Well, if anybody has any other questions, you can start posting them now. Well, what's your favorite destination? Well, while we wait for any questions, what's your favorite okay. destination that you've been to? Um, Haiti's my second home. I love it there. Uh, I love the people there. The Haitian people there are just, uh, there's nothing like them. Nothing like them. Um, I, I can't wait to go back, and I hope the restrictions and all that stuff will stuff out. And, um, yeah, this is, I, it's such a weird thing to say, because most people think of Haiti as, like, a, a dump, which some of it is. But, uh, it, it, I don't know. There's something about being around the people and, like, seeing the most, the poorest people in the world, the happiest people in the world. It's really... It's really unique, so, so big stuff over there. Never been to Hawaii. No, oh, I love Hawaii. Never been on the list. I would ask if I'm single, I am single. I'm not sure why that's relevant, but What's the best thing you have eaten during your travels? Uh, in El Salvador, they make this food called pupusa. Oh, Peaches loves that stuff. I hate it. Oh my gosh, they're like this big. It's 
it's like a tamale and they put meat and cheese in it and stuff and they're like 15 cents and we would go when i would go down south or we'd find this little mom and pop shop and like here's a 50 dollar bill and they'd be like like we want to make them all like we want hundreds of those things they just <laughs> they were so good oh they're so good i could eat them all day Where did you go in the Middle East? Uh, I was in Dubai. When you come to the UAE? UAE? What's UAE? Uh, that's not the United Arab Emirates. No, nah, I don't have no idea. I was in Dubai. I was in, uh, um, it was just a layover in uh, Kuwait. And while we were in the Taiwan, so we stopped by over there. But Dubai was, uh, well, that's the country where Dubai is. Okay. I don't know that much. <laughs> Dubai was incredible. Have you ever been to Canada? No. Too cold. <laughs> Only been to the Only to the hot places. Yeah. <laughs> I've been to the pretty part of Niagara Falls. I hate that kid that has the better fucking balls. <laughs> mm. Why is Jam passed the pizza? Uh, good question. I don't know. Your team never like that. I will sometimes just like in the middle of the night just pop on and look at Twitter or something like that. Like, oh my gosh, all these people are still awake. You're there. <laughs> we got questions for the other time. <laughs> Do I like sushi? I love sushi. Well, you know, get in line. It's a short one. <laughs> uh, Mark had a question. Um, I did. Mark. What do you want to be remembered for uh, for more than anything else? Um, what do I want to be remembered for? Or is that something that you have to do? I don't even know. I have no idea. Um, I don't even think about it. I just hope one day I'll see all you guys in heaven and we can just hang out. <laughs> hang out at the local Christmas tree? Yeah. <laughs> in heaven? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just hope Tupac, Tupac Shakur, of all people, said he had this quote I love, man. He's like, I just hope one day I can spark the brain of someone that can change the world. So I was like, that would be that would be pretty awesome. That would be pretty awesome. Little Tupac. Jay will be remembered for the greatest salesman in nine line history. <laughs> <Maybe>. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's a mark. That's about it. Yeah, yeah. Part time now. Part time. I teach English huh. online. Oh, two good. days, two days a week. Yeah. Doctor Rachel says Jay will go down in history as the number one lawnmower simulator. Yeah. That's funny. You guys are. I see that on Twitter. I've never watched you uh, virtually. You don't want to watch it. Uh, there is something satisfying about a perfectly cut lawn, although it's, it's not real, so I just don't know. <laughs> Jay will be remembered for the worst Mario Kart record in history. Probably. Didn't you win one the other night? Was it the first yeah, time one, it one in two years. Right. So well. I'm terrible at that game. I haven't played any games since the Nintendo 64 came out, so... Oh, gosh. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Your kids don't Texas. play games? They do, but... I, mean, I don't really call it playing really when I get out. Okay. Yeah. Uh, one is nine years old, he's no longer in the 
latitude are five. You know, I think they play as uh, you know, they play toys. Watch this. Best couch sleeper of all time. Yeah, that would be a good one. There you go. I fall asleep anywhere. That took years of training. <laughs> so where's the worst place you've ever slept? Then? That's what she uh, said. Training is pretty bad. Oh, yeah. We're up in like some of the mountain areas. It's like they're like, here's a thin sheet. Here's the ground. Enjoy. <laughs> it's like, geez. Uh, yeah. There was a couple of times we were working in these communities and you just like you just can't sleep because you hear stuff mm-hmm. you stuff wow. scurrying around and you're like all i need is like snake to show up or a mouse to nibble on my nose or some mm-hmm. bug to crawl in my ear yeah it's just it's not good i was wondering how you slept outside when i watched uh, you and mckenna do your i hated it i didn't sleep like, good. how did you fall asleep Oh, like, did she? I mean, did, I guess she just used to it, and she just fell asleep, wasn't worried. Yeah. <laughs> oh, I, hey, I was nervous. I, I think I slept for a little bit because she had she recorded me snoring, but I didn't sleep long. That was that was brutal. Yeah. I think I could get used to it. You know what the biggest problem was? Where we camped, it wasn't a shower. <laughs> it was like a, it was like a pump water. Um, uh, that's what the waterfall is for, John. If I had to sleep on the ground, but I could take a shower, you know, like the next morning, I probably would be all right. But it was like you're pumping this water; it's it's like negative ten degrees, like it's freezing cold, and you just splash it on your face. Now, what about Haiti? Then, what do they have? Um, so they have these giant rubber containers that they put on top of their buildings and it's just gravity so you turn on and the water the water comes out but that that was like um then we did bucket baths and stuff but that was like i was like living there and so you kind of got used to it then you come back to the states to hot showers and everything and when mckenna was like you're gonna sleep outside hey they don't have bears all right in california everywhere we were was like bear signs there's no bears there's no where he was at yeah, there's bears we need a tent she goes what you think tent's gonna be <laughs> like what's the difference so it's like, so, just a sense of comfort i slept dude, this is so funny i slept next to me was a giant machete a flashlight a bottle of water uh, and I don't know, a screwdriver. I had like everything ready, so if I had to wake up, I'd be like, machete ready, you know? <laughs> so, what, you do? what was I gonna possibly do? So, a giant, giant bear comes out. I'd be more worried about a cougar than a bear. Where he was at, anyway. Well, I mean, I'd rather have a machete than nothing, personally. It's true. I guess it just made me feel safe. Yeah, it's just like a sense of false safety. Well, that's yeah. Black Studio. If you want to know more about that, go to subscribe to her channel at humansoutofthebox.com. Uh, you do. I do art. Yeah. I know. I would love to. Or at least if you send it back. But that's okay. Yeah. Experience is everything. (laughs) (laughs) I think those were all of my questions. Yeah. I mean, besides the really deep personal ones, but I need to end them later, though. Oh. Oh.
now, man. You put spin on the camera, man. We're in the middle of a pandemic. Super spreader. Ah. Sorry, everybody. Don't catch it now. Exactly. Uh, yeah. So, yeah. I guess, Jay, what, what else do you talk about? Is it just nerdy, geeky stuff, or more, you know, like, newer stuff down to you? I don't know. Click here to answer that question. Newer stuff? I don't know. I don't know. I thought this was a professional show. What kind of question is that? Stuff that you do. We like to leave it open to interpretation so that you can fill in whatever you think we're calling. Um, yeah, um, pretty much, like. Whatever. The problem is, like, Gina Carano grew my channel from 9,000 to fit, like 40,000. So if I don't do a Gina Carano video at least once a week, people get upset. So pretty much the fan club president, the inside scooper, all that stuff. So, so like, so they expect it. Like, that's what gets a lot of the views and stuff, um, you know, from, from my channel. So, I, right now, I the, looking for something. The hot topic is the galactic star cruiser, though, it seems like. Yeah. There's a lot of going on now. What is going on? They're angry at me, too. Theme park people are mad. They're always mad. One meant. person say, like, your channel should be taken down for hate speech because I was complaining about the star cruiser. Hate speech. I was like, are you kidding me? It's stupid. It's six thousand dollars for two nights. And is that just one person or is it two people? Three people. Uh, they even still. Yeah. And then like, I was like, okay, six thousand. All right, no problem. But then give us something that's worth. Give us something that's worth six thousand dollars. You know. Yeah. And so it's like, then they showed us what they were giving us, and we're like, you want us to pay six thousand dollars for something we could probably do for two fifty, two hundred fifty bucks? Yeah, no, that is ridiculous. And so the people that are like, that Dis there is a lot of people out there that's like Disney can do no wrong. They're just like, ah, hey, this that. So, well, you know, I mean, Disney's done a lot of wrong. People with the ministry of heaven. Yeah, he's got a interesting history. <laughs> if any of it's true, can we believe anything anymore? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's why, you know, you don't know, hear from the mainstream. Well, I think that's the that's the beauty of YouTube as well is. Uh, People are waking up to like how much they're being lied to, and how much you know. You can only go, you can only keep, you can only cry wolf so many times, you know. And and it's like, how many times are they gonna keep crying wolf? Uh, the news media, and which is kind of like now it's common. You're at the point where they come out and they're like, "Oh, well, this person said that," and you're just like, "Oh." You know, and and, it, and then people are they're just starting to wake up, and then when you question that, then you get you know hit with labels and stuff. And now we're at the point now where terms like racist and stuff they don't have meaning mm -hmm. anymore because yeah. everyone is a racist at this point. I mean that's just how it is. And so when somebody who actually is that is doing something, it, it doesn't have way to it anymore it's just yeah it's like and, and now people are just like well everybody's one so whatever and it it's uh it, it, they've done that to themselves you know like like with all those with all those kind of the way they just call people and put people in a box and so they so people are looking at others i mean it's interesting why 
certain channels are on the rise and Twitter profiles, all that stuff are on the rise. And um, because people are looking for truth and not bias, name calling or whatever they want, agenda driven or whatever it is, they're just looking for it because they're starting to see that what they what they were used to getting is not it's not accurate and like you can only fear mongrel people so much too that's why all throughout history rebellions are born out of people trying to fear monger them you know it's just how it is like all throughout history kings were overthrown you know by people uh haiti being the best example ever most people don't even know their history is that the haitians revolted they were Haitian slaves that revolted against the France and they took over that country um, from France occupied you know France occupied it they rose up and like, can't take this anymore like you can't treat us like this we're humans we're people and it was so powerful that with Napoleon sold a, a large chunk of the United States to get money to go fight the Haitian slaves, most people know what that's called, is the Louisiana Purchase. And, you know, so they can go back. But So you can thank Haiti for half of America <laughs> for revolting because they had no means in selling it. But, you know, and, and you know, it's just people just rise, they just rise up after a while. And in a country like ours that, that we're so used to our freedoms, after a while, it will get to a certain, like for some people, it will get to a certain point where they'll be like, I'm okay with this, I'm okay with this, I'm okay with this, or I'm not okay with this. Right. You know, and for some people, their threshold's here, for some it's here, some it's here. Uh, some people just have to be slapped right in the face. But, um, you know, I, I think we're getting to that point because you see people all the time like, hey, now wait a minute. <laughs> you know, like, wait a minute. You told us this was going to happen, you told us that, and now it's not. Like, so, it's an interesting time to see. And that's probably why the rebellion just sold so much. I think people yeah. bought them. That's for sure. They didn't even know who I, who I was. They didn't know anything about me. They just saw it online and went, yeah, I think we can use a little rebellion right now. So. The fact that it's got a beautiful American flag stamped on it. It's the rebellion flag. Yeah. That's the mm -hmm. Right. So. Life is, it's, 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 it's cool, but it's, it's interesting to see what's happening. Oh. So. <laughs> you guys were still on, so I figured I might jump in and say, Hi, what's up, Jay? Hey, what's up? <laughs> Oh, I thought done. perhaps you were going to say oh, something. Yeah, yeah we're soul searching thing. Yeah, I found one. It was really different. <laughs> I've talked a lot. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Is Superman your favorite superhero? I've got to ask. We've been celebrating superheroes this month. So I see you have a Superman mug. Is that your favorite? Yeah. Oh, my yeah. man. Oh, Superman. There we go. Yeah. It's, uh, well, what do you this like? This was so tea, much? but it's like it's like cold now. So. Yeah, same over uh, what, what what makes Superman your icon? Why do you choose him above? Why do you choose him above Batman? I don't like Batman. Yeah. What? I don't like Batman. Everyone likes Batman. To be honest, uh, Marvel is my favorite. And like I like the Punisher is probably one of my all time. I love Superman. I've always been I just want everyone to know Drunk and I are no longer friends. He doesn't like Batman. Superman has always been like number one, but I've, I've always been a huge Marvel person. 
but uh, not much of a Batman guy. So I don't know. Superman, like he can fly, hmm. he can see through clothes. Uh, he can, I mean, see through walls. He can. Wow. He can, you know, he can run fast. Yeah. So, Mark with the C is right, though. Indiana Jones was always my childhood hero of all time. So, I studied Indiana Jones. I read all his books. I got it. Yeah. 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 So, yeah, it was a, I mean, you could tell I had a huge impact in my life. He was a teacher. I'm a teacher. Travels the world. Travels the world. So, yeah, huge impact. Did you did you like uh, did you like the uh, Young Indiana Jones TV series? I have them all. Yeah, sweet. I enjoyed them. Well, I mean, I haven't seen them in a good day. Uh, I, I enjoyed them. I didn't like the last one where they like showed Indy was like really old and like one eye. Uh, I think he was missing a leg too. You no. Know? Yeah. Yeah, I was like, what is that? Like, they should have just kept him when he was younger, you know? And, but they, they did one episode where they fast forward. He was like in his 90s. And he was like missing an eye. And I think he was missing half a leg, I think. And it's been a while, so. So they fast forward to the current film being made now, basically. Huh. <laughs> if it's ever going to get me out made. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What did he think about doing the uh, before? It was terrible. <laughs> yeah. Crystal Skull. Yeah. It was awful. It was horrible. I I was so listen, when when that movie oh, was announced, I was so the, the the original trailer for that film got me so excited <laughs> because it showed like it had it like Ark and the Covenant. It showed like all three films and they're like it's got one more adventure in them. I was so I I dug into like Every spoiler, like every spoiler I could possibly find, and somebody wrote a spoiler that I swore was it. It was so good. It was like uh, the Russians they find the Ark of the Covenant, and Indy's older now, and they're like, "You're the only one with knowledge of that. Can you go get it?" You know, and so they use Shia LaBeouf and others to help him, and you know, to go to go get it back. And that's what I oh. thought was gonna happen. And so the beginning of the movie starts, it's rush it, the arc gonna come, like this is it, it's true, it's gonna happen. They were like, no, not even close. Yeah. <laughs> and I was like, oh, I'm watching this film like yeah, and the worst Huge like, like yeah. a lot of people hate the monkey scene, that was terrible. But I thought when it was in quicksand and it was snake, I was like, this is so it looked terrible, man. I was like <laughs> The whole point of Indiana Jones, like the first three, like the sets were huge. Yeah. And they like filmed it like in location. Like the uh, Temple of Doom, that bridge at the end is in Sri Lanka. You can go visit it. So it's this giant uh, bridge. They won't let anybody walk on it, but it's there. So it was, uh, yeah, so it's like the sets were big. And they, but I get how that's difficult and stuff, but. Um, Man, that boy. Yeah. But it made like a gazillion dollars, so they don't care. You know? It's true. Yeah. Because it seems nobody knew what it was going to be like. Right. Too bad. Yeah. Cowboys and aliens were better. Yeah. The last that was better than that Crystal Skull. <laughs> but it wasn't. It wasn't like a Last Jedi franchise killer for me, so. Right. That's true. That's true. You it was just a really it. bad story. That's all. Yeah. For me, it was just like, it was dumb. The ending I thought with Aliens was even worse. I was just like, yeah. Yeah. I think mean, because I they went alien route. Yeah. I didn't cons- yeah, I just thought it was a dumb, it was a bad film. And that's okay. They had three amazing films, so one bad right. one out of the batch. Sorry, the yeah. Alien movie was the get you ready for propaganda. Uh, aliens today coming to take over the world. So. I don't believe that because the movie sucked. <laughs> <laughs> the movie was good then maybe. But, yeah. so. 
And if you see that film, my dad watched it a long time ago when like the 4K TVs and everything like that, that came out and they were all the big thing. And if you watch that film um, on 4K, like you can literally see where the, the CGI, as far as like where the, uh, the set ends because everything is enhanced and it's just awful. I mean, it literally looks so amazing. Mm-hmm. It's pretty, yeah. pretty. I haven't watched that movie in a long time. Yeah, there's a reason exactly. I I just I happen to walk in and no, watch it. Uh, the other three, like me and my brother can watch Raiders quoted for things. Oh all right, that's how much like I think Indiana Jones, as much as I love Star Wars, Indiana Jones had a bigger impact uh on my life. I just I don't my, my parents are just, they're really religious. So growing up it, we weren't allowed to go to the movies and watch certain things on TV. Uh, There's a lot of things we couldn't do. So I think this sense of adventure and that type of, like, Superman can fly away and, like, being, they weren't, my parents are amazing, beautiful. I love them to death. But when me and my brother were growing up, they were just, we were just part of a church and they, they were just really, like, held us tight, you know? Like, uh, hey, can I go out with my friends? No. Uh, you can stay in your yard. That's as far as you can. Like, it was like that. We go to the movies. So, oh, no, no, the movies are bad. But for some reason, <laughs> they let us watch Indiana Jones and Star Wars. So. <laughs> All right, I think I'm done. Whatever it's worth, you know? That's a, that's we, weren't great even allowed, we weren't even allowed to have comic books. Um, you know? So it was, it was hmm. around like, like, stuff. until we got a little older. Once I was in high school, they were my parents were they, they were a little easier on that. Like growing up, was, yeah, was like, no, no. Yeah, every time we got in trouble, hmm. we had to write out a book of the Bible. So that made me like hate the Bible to death. I was oh, like, wow. oh, oh, oh. Bible? Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, you gotta use the, the King James. I don't even know what y'all are saying. <laughs> I like the um, King James. It's very theatrical. This is I mean, true. Is yeah, but not if you want to write it out every time you get. I wish I would have kept. You know, I do wish I would have kept it because I, I think I wrote out the entire Bible maybe twice in my lifetime, like in a, in a notebook. I would have liked to like gone back and like look at this. <laughs> what y'all boy did. <laughs> what accomplishment. So, we would get yeah. great punctuation too. Like if you miss that comma or that semicolon, when you were writing down your Bible verses, that, that's the point against you. You can't, you can't do it. <laughs> Interesting. Mm-hmm. Uh, Mark is the only All right. Wow. Well, you're not allowed on my, <laughs> my live streams. Until you see at least Raiders, even though Temple of Doom was my favorite. Um, All right, I'm gonna mute that. Well, it looks like I'm done, guys. This is a very dramatic, uh, very dramatic lighting right there. But uh, yeah, what do you guys think? Let me uh, turn up the the brightness on here. Yeah, you guys like it? He even said he wanted me to have dramatic lighting. So, uh, yeah, I can't really... Let me... There's too much of a glare when I take a photograph, so I think I'm going to have to wait until tomorrow when it's dry to take a photograph and to post a, to post a time lapse. I mean, I you know, let me try. Let me try something. Maybe if I can get it at a good angle or something. It's just, it's too shiny. Maybe if I put something like behind it so it's at an angle, I can get a good photo. Hmm. Mm. Yeah, I'm just going to have to wait until it's dry. 
a little bit more tomorrow to post a time lapse. But, uh, yeah, I'm really tired, so I'm going to go inside, hang out with Peaches, maybe take a nap, and then get back to uh, separating out posters. But, uh, yeah, guys, everyone, thanks so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. If you want to go finish that uh, stream I was listening to, here is the link for it. Everyone, thank you so much for smashing the like button. Please smash the like button on your way out. Thank you for my first two members, which is Patrick and Jeremy. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. Uh, I'm so tired. That took so much energy. I'm trying this new thing where I don't drink caffeine. I'm trying to wing myself off of caffeine. So uh, I haven't had caffeine in two days, and I'm really feeling it. Uh, the addiction to that is real. But everyone, I'm going to play a little outro, and uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I'll post this up on Instagram tomorrow, and uh, if, I have, um, if I have time tomorrow, I'll do another painting stream, and I'll show you guys the final uh, one. But if you guys haven't yet, go check me out on Instagram. It is the art of Anna TSWG. I'm going to pull it up right now just so you guys can see uh, my Instagram here. It is linked. I post all of the uh, eye painting stuff here so you guys will be able to see. You see, these don't have like really uh, too much glares. This one's got a little bit of it. Uh, the more black that you use or the darker the colors, usually it'll have more of a glare. White is a little bit more matte. Uh, which is why some of these, when they're really pale, I can get a, a good photo. Um, but then it, it doesn't look good in person because there's like so much white and it's like half of it is matte, half of it is shiny, which is why you need to use varnish. But so the video for this painting will be up tomorrow uh, once it's dry enough for me to get a good angle on it. But uh, yeah, everyone, thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for being here. Have a great rest of your night, morning, evening, afternoon, wherever you are in the world. Uh, I saw flying was the winner for the uh, the poll with uh, what fifty nine percent. So everyone, uh, thank you for voting, and everyone, please smash the like button, leave me a comment on the way out, and have a great rest of your night. Bye.